Well, our top story continues to be the rehabilitation efforts on in the state of Kerala. Joining us now, Rajiv Sadanandan, the health secretary uh, from uh, Kerala. So appreciate you joining us here on CNBC TV 18. Uh, you have just concluded a review meeting with the chief minister. Uh, give me a status check of what things are like on the ground, sir. Well, the, uh, the good news is that uh, uh, there are no more rescue efforts to be done. Uh, all the people who have been marooned, isolated in different places, have been rescued and uh, brought to the camps. Uh, all the waters have received from that place, and uh, the, the, uh, everyone is, uh, and no, 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 there's no threat to life left. But um, we still have uh, uh, okay. 3,259 so camps and about uh, 1 lakh 96,000 and odd mm -hmm. families uh, still living there. Uh, many of them find it difficult to go back because um, the uh, houses are uninhabitable. And there is the threat of uh, infectious diseases breaking out. Mm -hmm. Uh, just on that issue of uh, the threat of infectious diseases, uh, I'm looking at a statement that's been put out uh, by Dr. Shashi Tharoor. Uh, he has, of course, met with uh, WHO officials and UN officials. Uh, in this statement, he says that the WHO is in position to offer Kerala rapid diagnostic kits to test water, water filters, and monitoring NCD patients on medication. Uh, uh, you know, is there a requirement for the WHO to step in and provide this sort of assistance? Is this what the state government is looking at? Uh, we, 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 we already have uh, uh, people from the WHO working with us. They're working with us surveillance medical officers. I mean, they're, they're national officers who are working with us. Uh, I had a conversation with the Deputy Director General, Dr. Saumya Swaminathan, and the India WHO representative. As of now, um, we do not need uh, uh, anything more, anything more sophisticated because right now, it, uh, right now, what we're doing is looking for infectious diseases, and uh, our diagnostic systems are quite capable mm -hmm. of taking care of, uh, of, of of the possible threats that could come up. Uh, in case there are uh, okay. cases of infectious and so on, which needs uh, looking at different panels. The National Institute of Virology and the Manipur uh, uh, Virology Research Institute, uh, who worked with us on the uh, on managing the Nipah crisis, are available to us. And uh, um, right now, I don't okay. think uh, any more support from the WHO. Uh, the national systems are quite capable of taking care of them. Okay, so you're saying right now you don't require any further assistance for the, from the WHO, though you're already in touch with them. But what about uh, antibiotics? Uh, what about medicines, vaccines, etc.? Uh, you know, for the possibility of leptospirosis or any of those other uh, critical uh, issues that may crop up. Uh, our antibiotic stock is, uh, I mean, uh, sufficient. In fact, we are uh, right now about 40 percent more than what we need. We intend to ramp it up to 100% I mean, redundancy. Uh, the um, uh, leptospirosis in itself is, uh, uh, is, is, is not something that needs advanced antibiotics. Either simple antibiotics like crystalline penicillin and doxycycline is capable of taking care of it. We've also issued an advisory on uh, prophylaxis for against antibiotic uh, against leptospirosis using the antibiotic doxycycline. So uh, uh, lepto is not a major threat. The, 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 in any of these diseases, the issue is not management. The issue is uh, what are your systems that can pick mm -hmm. this up immediately and how good is the response to contain the epidemic? And that yes. is what we are focusing on. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what have you been able to do in terms of being able to put the safeguards in place, uh, both in terms of management as well as anticipation? You know, we are in what the disaster management people call the uh, recuperation phase. The initial one was the rescue at that time. We were focusing on, on, on uh, the people who are being brought in. And right now, our focus is and even now on the camps because we are worried with uh, so many people living together. And having had, before the uh, flood came, we had an... Uh, an outbreak of leptospirosis and um, chicken pox. Uh, so we expect that many of the persons who went to the camps mm -hmm. following the flood would have been carrying these microbes. And 
um, and, and and could have infected others. Okay. So right now, our focus is on 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 in on three areas. One is to see whether any residue of the old chicken box and leptospirosis uh, um, cases are, uh, are 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 remaining and whether they have caused infections. And the other one is um, the, the first um, worry after a, uh, a flood, which is the uh, acute diarrheal disease. These are two. These are three areas that we are currently uh, mm -hmm. watching for. While the whole I mean, the surveillance takes care of uh, all the three, but these are areas of concern as of now. Uh, these are specific areas of concern that you are watching out for. In terms of the efforts uh, uh, on currently, sir, as you said, that the rescue operations are now over and the focus now shifts to rehabilitation. What will be the priority areas from here on? No, rehabilitation will wait uh, some more time because right now it is uh, there, are, there are lots of things to be done. There are, you know, uh, uh, houses to be cleaned up and during the cleanup we expect a lot of snake bites. That's one area that we're focusing on immediate attention to uh, snake bite victims. And, um, and the second part is going to be all the water sources have been contaminated, uh, cleaning up the water sources and ensuring that safe uh, water is provided. And mm -hmm. uh, people have been off medications for a few days, you know, during the time people who are on insulin, who are on the uh, antihypertensive drugs. Uh, right. Because of what is coming in, they have been off medication for the last uh, three or four days, which exposes them to lots of um, you know mm. cardiovascular and neurological complications. That is the other area that we are currently watching for. Now, once this part is over and when the rehabilitation starts, uh, the focus mm. is going to be, we have lost about uh, uh, 58 uh, uh, institutions of which... Uh, uh, nine of them have been uh, totally lost and uh, finding, uh, sorry, eight uh, primary health okay. centers, four community health centers and one sub hospitals and some sub-centers have been lost. So the first part mm. is going to be uh, finding mm. a common for them and rebuilding them. And uh, we have lost uh, equip our, our equipment in most of the uh, flood affected areas. There was no time to evacuate the uh, equipment. Mm. So that they will have to replace. So that was going to be the first priority. Right. Bring our infrastructure, you know, which Kerala is known for, bringing it back to speed. That's the first part. And then mm. uh, it's also possible that we'll have a lot of downstream complications of the, uh, what I mentioned before, the non-communicable diseases, uh, whose uh, uh, management um, would would they been off management for about three four days. So what we are doing with uh, the non-communicable diseases mm -hmm. as of now is. Uh, taking our, our, our register that is made in centrally and going back and checking back on all of them to see that whether their hypertension and glycemic okay. levels are under control and if they are not I'm managing it. The other area we are focusing on is we were on 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 road uh, on on route to uh, TB elimination. I mean, uh, uh, within a few years, so the uh, mm -hmm. the, the 27,000 mm -hmm. people we had on treatment. We're going back and verifying whether they are uh, mm -hmm. there so that our uh, movement towards uh, TB elimination is, is, is maintained. So uh, a lot of work to be done. Yes, sir, clearly, sir. So I, I uh, will end then by asking you a final question, sir. Uh, and again, I refer back to the statement that's come in from Dr. Shashi Tharoor. Uh, he says that the state government should examine whether it requires a multi-sector assessment by UN agencies, which include the WHO, the UNICEF, and the OCHA. And he also says that the state government could request for the 2 million WHO stock of anti-cholera vaccines to minimize the risk of grave waterborne diseases. Uh, do you feel, at least on the second part, on whether uh, you you require to uh, whether you require the uh, anti-cholera uh, vaccines uh, from the WHO or do you believe that you have enough anyway again let me explain we work very closely with the India office of WHO the Southeastern Regional Office and the Geneva headquarters in fact um, we, we, we have been closely working with them on for a few years and we had a discussion with uh, Dr. Soumya Swaminathan on, 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 on vaccination what we feel is that the uh, incidence of cholera in Kerala is not very high. And uh, cholera vaccination, what we have right mm -hmm. now, has a 30% efficacy. And it will be better for us to focus on the surveillance systems and effective management 
than on the uh, cholera vaccination. Mm. Geneva, WHO Geneva is also suggesting some other vaccines which we'll be looking at. As of now, that is not under consideration. Not under consideration. Uh, Mr. Sadanandan, always a pleasure, sir. Appreciate you joining us here on CNBC TV 18. I know it's a busy time for you. We wish you the very best of luck uh, and appreciate uh, your time here. On